Welcome to Politics Done Right. I am your host, Egberto Williams. This is the progressive program that will take the mystery out of politics. This is the program that will encourage you to make sure government becomes we the people. Whether you are liberal, conservative, or otherwise, you get to air your point of view. Remember, you can also send me a tweet to E-G-B-E-R-T-O-W-I-L-L-I-E-S, that is, at Egberto Willie. Let us engage. It is politics done right. One, two, three, four. Well, folks, welcome to one more edition of Politics and Right. I'm Egberto Willis, your host. Thank you so kindly for being a part of the show. We are going to have a great show for you today. Of course, you know what? He caved. But we knew he was going to cave. But before we get started with the program, I want to ask you guys a very large favor. It is important for us to get the progressive message out. And in order to get the progressive message out, we need you to do your part. So please go ahead. If you're listening, if you're just coming on right now, go ahead and share this show on your page right now, go ahead and share this show on your on your wall, your Facebook wall, your Facebook page, your Facebook group. Let's get busy. Let's go ahead and share this on your Twitter, your Instagram, your Yellow Man. I can never remember that the, the name of the Yellow Man. But anyhow, Tumblr, all the others. Folks, we're going to have a great show for you today. As usual, everybody seemed to have come out against Trump, right? Hey, even uh, the, the, the uh, Prime Minister of England finally got some pelotas and she actually had something negative to say about trump trump america cannot do that that is not the right thing to do he also heard it from france he heard it from every other country he heard it from the governors pulling the the guards out of texas and the border regions wow so everybody was against trump and a whole lot of people are thinking now oh trump is gonna cave but we always knew trump intended to cave this is not a surprise. It was always in the cards for Trump to cave. Trump just needed to do a few things. Trump needed to show some bona fides. Trump just needed to do a few things, folks. So don't take this as somehow Trump stepped back or somehow, you know, something happened special or whatever. No, no, no. This was all planned. This was all, this is true to form. And I know a whole lot of you don't quite believe that, but it was true to form. A whole lot more people are coming on. Please, folks, please go ahead. And if you're just coming on, share the program right away. Let's let people know what's going on in America. And welcome aboard. I, th- I, I see I have somebody here from London as well. Welcome aboard. You guys, uh, uh, I, I'm not particularly enthralled with your prime minister, but you know what? The fact that she made herself heard, it's a good thing. All right? So folks all over the world are looking at America with new eyes. Folks, let me tell you, this has a material effect on you too, okay? Remember, you want to travel overseas. You want to be, you know, when Americans uh, traveled overseas, they used to be respected, right? Don't you like that respect from just the name of being, yo soy americano? Somos americanos y somos americanos nos dan el respeto por todo el mundo. We are Americans. We used to get respect all over the world, but now we are looking just like all the rest. There seems to be nothing special anymore. But anyhow, let me welcome you guys. Mike Cisak, welcome aboard. Stephen Jones, welcome aboard. Stephen is from London. Becky Ashley, welcome aboard. And all the others that are coming, the newcomers, please go ahead and immediately share this show on your wall. Why? Because the way the Facebook algorithms work, we need to get throughput by people saying, yes, this is something that we should be watching. Uh, ah, Tia Terry Lauer Locker, welcome aboard. My, uh, Myra Noel, welcome aboard. Uh, Michael Rudnan, or resident, I like to call Michael Rudnan, or resident, uh, what, what is it, researcher, or all of that. <clears throat> William Bill McLeod, uh, running for judge. Remember, the hardest working man, the very hardest working man in local politics. William Bill McCloyd, he's running for judge, and he's getting people together to get things done in the county. He should be an example all over the country. So if you can, look up William Bill McCloyd, because I tell you what, you're going to learn a whole lot of how local politics, immediate politics, 
is supposed to work. Bruce Ballard, welcome aboard. Yes, I'll be glad to hear from you, my dear brother. Uh, let's see who else I should break should, should show off. Uh, talk about here. Okay. Uh, oops, I just went ahead and did a little something here, but you know what? That is okay. That is okay, folks. Anyhow, we are going to have a great show for you today. What is the show going to be about? The title of the show today is. Let me see if I can get to the title. Trump caved as expected, but he may have already won the game. I want you guys to see what I'm talking about. Okay. Because what happens is when you watch these things on the news media, this is just a transient, right? The hot stuff today is what's happening to those kids, those kids being taken away. But do you think that really matters to the news, to the mainstream news media? Oh, no, 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 no. This is just a, another thing to get some clicks. Another thing, you know, I am looking for clicks too, but I'm looking for clicks to inform. I'm looking for you guys to share this stuff so that other people can be informed as far as what's really happening in America, not just the facade of what the mainstream media wants to tell you. Because remember, they're only working for the plutocracy now. They're only working for the corporations that are advertising on their network. So how can them working for the advertisers on the network somehow give any kind of information that prove the advertisers are really evil? I don't want to say that quite, but think about the drug companies, what they're doing to you. Think about the, doc, the, 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 the uh, insurance companies, what they're doing do to, to you. And who are the biggest advertisers out there, if not these people? So if you want an, an adulterated real news, where are you going to go? You have to come to the independent media. And if you want to have an independent media, and before you go, share this again. Before you go, if you want an independent media, folks, you have to support an independent media. So for those who have the wherewithal, we always ask you to go to patreon.com slash politics done right. That is P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com slash politics done right. It's right there. On, if you're on Facebook Live, you can click on it directly and become a subscriber of Politics Done Right. It's just a matter of saying, we are going to give a cup of coffee or a little or a salad or a Starbucks salad or something to Politics Done Right to ensure that we can continue doing what we do. And by the way, folks, we are going to be at Netroots in August. We are going to be on Radio Row in, on, uh, at Netroots. So we are going to be broadcasting directly from New Orleans in, uh, it, at Netroots Nation. We are going to have all these progressive politicians and quite a few active bloggers, bloggers that are making a difference. We are going to be interviewing all of them. So we will be on. Yes, we will still do our show at 3 uh, at 3 p.m. Central Time, but we will be on at different times. We don't know when because if a politician passed by Radio Row, we may drag them and say, "Hey, how you doing?" You can you can look at last year's net uh, net uh, net roots and see some of the politicians that we had there. In fact. Oh, uh, we had quite a few of them that have already won their progressive races throughout the country, and we're going to have them again at New, in New Orleans, Netroots Nation, directly from Radio Row. So, folks, help support this kind of stuff that's going to tell you guys exactly who's out there, the real progressives. I have a quick story to tell you before I get into the story, because, and I'm going to write about this, uh, and I'll probably have the blog written so that we can have it on um on the front page of Daily Coast on Sunday. I get a lot of hell a whole lot of times because I hit the Democratic Party pretty hard, right? And why do I hit the Democratic Party? Because we are supposed to be the progressive wing or the progressive side of the, of the aisles. And what do we do? We forget that all the times. Here's what happened. Governor Chris Christie in New Jersey. Uh, the Democrats would constantly send him bills saying, hey, we need to have a real progressive tax in our state, New Jersey. We need to tax these guys about 2% more so that we can be able to pay our teachers a little bit more so that we can be able to do all these things. They've been getting all the spoils. These are the people in New Jersey. Okay, guess what happened recently? The blue wave has started, right? The blue wave has started. Progressivism is going to begin again. We can expect that, people. Democrats are going to win. Things are going to be okay. We got a Democrat as governor on, in New Jersey. Replace El Senor Cristi, who would always veto any bill that attempted to even add a tad bit of taxes to those who are, have made it very well a lot of times by pilfering you, if you they've made it well in in uh, in medicine, in in, uh, in drugs, and in, in made, made it well in uh, insurance or whatever. These are these are things that pill for you, okay? So now it's time that the new Republican, uh, the Republican, I mean the new Democratic governor of New Jersey, comes out with the bill and he says, okay, we are in power now. Democrats control all of New Jersey now. We are going to do what we've promised. Send me that bill where we, we apply 2% uh, hike 
in taxes to the very wealthy. It only affects 39,000 people in our state. Send me the bill. Do you know what the head, and I'm going to write a blog in, in one of my blogs called Failed Democrats. Do you know what one of those, uh, the, the, the president of the Democrats, uh, I think it's the Senate, what he did? He start. they heard him, on, or rather, they heard Chris Christie on the phone with that guy, Republican Chris Christie, on the phone with the president of that, uh, I think it was the, the Senate, talking about how do they stop the governor from raising the taxes 2% on 39,000 multimillionaires in New Jersey. Do you see the problem that Democrats, the hypocrisy? Do you see why I speak about Democrats in a different tone than I speak about real progressives? That is the reason why. You want votes, you be honest with people. You want to, you, you want to claim that you are the progressive side, be progressive. You want to go out and have the mantra where you say the, 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 the spoils are all going to the very few 1%, live it, vote it. But no, folks, when I talk about the rails, when I talk about the establishment being no different in either the Democratic Party or the Republican Party, that is case in point. That will be the, uh, that will be my article on the front page on uh, Sunday for the Daily Coast. So look out for it, the front page. Who knows if they're going to put it uh, uh, either in the morning, the middle of the day, or at night. My hunch is it will be controversial enough that they're going to want it to be later in the day. But folks, we got to get, look, we got to get busy with this stuff. Anyhow, what is the show about today? Trump caved as expected, but he have already won the game. Subtitle, yes, Trump caved, but only he proved a very important point to his base. He will continue to be a racist xenophobe, irrespective of blowback for progressives or his own party. Now, look, many believe that they can rest easy now that Donald Trump caved. That is not the case. In effect, he used this situation to prove his bona fides to his base. And you know what? It worked. It worked. It was clear on the right-wing sites it was very clear on the right-wing sites that they were happy with him. Hell, even 55% of re the Republican Party was in sync. Yes, many of rhinos came out against and a few evangelicals attempted to save face. But most evangelical leaders found their outward evil to direct their flock down the sewer. Unfortunately, folks, this stuff afflicts everybody. This, flux, this stuff afflicts friends, family, uh, uh, the things that I've seen from friends and families on the on 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 Facebook in support of this guy, I mean, I, I am in utter disgust. I am in utter. Do you really mean that? I'm uh, in utter. I know you. You're intelligent. You had a mind. What happened? And this is not to be. Uh, I am not trying to be. You know arrogant with these folks or i'm not trying to be to diss these folks although they do deem dissing if if anybody buys the crap trump is selling but hey for now we hold for now we hold look i'm going to read the blog of the week but since there's a caller waiting i'm going to bring the caller in and off schedule you know how we run here we you this is your show so if you're going to call in i'm going to put you on as soon as i can and since i haven't started the blog of the week yet i'll bring in 919, you're hot. What would, what would you like to say? And 919 disappeared. Okay, so what we'll do then, since 919 uh, came on and then w went off, what we will do is go ahead and go for the blog of the week. So the way I say this is this way. Do you know what time it is? Do you really know what time it is? It's time, it's time for the for weekly, weekly blog, blog, blog post. post. Okay, folks. The title of the blog post. Backlash. Trump caved. But we must remember who supported him. Very important. It is important to remember who supported him. The leaders specifically, but even the followers, even your families, even your friends, because you're not going to rub it in and say, hey, because all of this is going to be revealed in the long run. But what you want to do is remind people how easily it was for intelligent people 
to be blasted by an ideal by simply ideology to to allow them to promote sub uh, promote evil so do not ever forget those who were on this bandwagon forgive never forget those who were in this bandwagon don't forget that they've given up all of their morals all of the things that they believed in and for the conservatives and the evangelicals all the things that they've preached never again must an evangelical be taken seriously never again must an evangelical be considered a moral person they are just a person, fallible like everybody else. But one other fallibility they have is that of gullibility to do wrong, just like those. And I don't normally use a Nazi example, but just like I don't consider all those Germans that were Nazi sympathizers other than people who were brainwashed or people who fell into that peer pressure thing that is very hard to get away from. But remember that. Those of you who didn't fall onto the Trump bandwagon, you are the strong ones. You are the ones who have that thing upstairs that says there's nothing, nothing that's going to change my morality from that which helps humanity. Anyhow, Trump caved, but do not get too excited about that. The immigration disaster that we are experiencing right now is no accident. Trump knows the outrage is temporary, but... But the divide and conquer longer lasting. He got all the nativist, xenophobes, and racists re-engaged. Mission cumplida. Mission accomplished. Like that mission accomplished. Remember Bush. But man, Bush now looks like a saint, man. According to CNBC, President Donald Trump said Wednesday he plans to sign an executive order designed to keep families together during the tension on the U.S.-Mexico border. I'll be signing something in a little while that's going to do that, he told reporters during a White House event after saying he, he wanted families to be kept together. I'll be doing something that's somewhat preemptive and ultimately will be matched by legislation, I'm sure, Trump added. We're keeping families together, but we have to keep our borders strong. We will be overrun with crime and with people that should not be in our country. The order is expected to allow families to be housed together even while adults in the family are being detained or prosecuted for crossing the U.S. border illegally or for seeking asylum at the border outside of a designated border entry point. Speaking at the start of the meeting with members of Congress, Trump said he faced a dilemma as criticism of his administration's policy has grown louder in the past week. Uh, the, 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 the dilemma is you're weak. The country is going to be overwhelmed with undocumented immigrants. If you're strong, then you don't have any heart. Perhaps I'd like to be strong, the president said, according to the pool reporters in the room. Now, you see what the president is doing there, and he's good at doing that. What he's doing there is he's, he, he still is making you believe that he had to do that. He was following the law. So what he then does is he creates an executive order, and he comes out like the martyr now. I am the one who's saving these parents who are losing their kids. I did that. Now I'm asking for legislation to kind of back it up. What's so interesting is based on what DACA did isn't that similar to what Obama said? Okay, we're going to selectively do enforce the laws based on priorities. That's DACA, right? But guess what? They forget. They forget that there was no law that told Trump he had to separate the families. There, was, there were laws that told Obama that all these people that are uh, undocumented in the long run needed to be prosecuted, but the executive has discretion on how, when, what, where, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And in the process of waiting for that, he can say, okay, while you're waiting for your disposition, we'll go ahead and allow you to work. While you're waiting for your disposition, we'll allow you to have a social security number with the expectation that Congress would do something to mitigate these guys ever leaving. There's a big difference between what Obama did with DACA and what he's doing. He's claiming that he's doing with separating families. He's not protecting against the law or anything like that. He's pro protecting against against a policy he created through his attorney general session. Let's remember that. Do not allow them to mix these things up. You must understand these things because it is important lest we continue to get those that are confused, those that are continuing to work with this charlatan. We don't want that. 
We want a people who are well informed. Continuing with the blog. Yes, Trump caved. While too many are speaking about the fact that Trump caved as some win, I beg to differ. It is true that most of the media, except the right wing one, of course, refuted Trump's assertion that separating families was a democratic law. That said, in the same breath, they've given him too much airtime to lie and blame Democrats for his policies. In doing so... In doing so, Trump continues to convince his base that he is just following the law. And for the low information, otherwise non-ideological voter, they do not know what to believe. During this uh, period of child internment by the Trump administration, many stayed silent or outright defended the president's evil act. We must, we must call out these people and keep the focus on them as well as Americans promoting a divisive, immoral stance anathema to all that America is supposed to be don't forget that consequences my friends consequences my friends consequences supporting politicians must pay the price we must expose the media personalities who gave trump cover as unreliable and evil for using their platform to lie and materially hurt other human beings there are some of the same these are some of the same people who supported the alleged pedophile running for senate in alabama roy moore remember that even the evangelicals supported this pedophile even the evangelicals as i said before anybody who puts any worth into evangelical leaders anybody who puts any worth into these people as being our moral compass should be ashamed of themselves because they've shown that their morality is up for sale. They've shown that their morality is congruent to power. So folks, let's remember that. It is so important that we remember that. Do not fall into the trap. Continue with the blog, then I'll get to the phone. The Daily Beast expose, expose on Carlson says it best. Fox News host Tucker Carlson is very concerned about people like likening him to a certain genoci uh, genocidal dictator. The cost is entirely on you, Carlson told his audience in a, in a Monday night monologue in which he warned of immigrants moving to their neighborhoods. But don't complain or else they will call you Hitler. But Carlson monologue wouldn't have been far out of place on a white supremacist forum. Hours after ProPublica uh, released disturbing audio of immigrant children who had been separated from their parents at the U.S. border, Carlson told viewers that immigrants were coming to change your country forever. Change your country. Those brown people are coming to change your country forever. In a screed against what he termed as the ruling class, Carlson, a millionaire who went to, an, uh, who went to aristocratic Rhode Island boarding school, St. George's, defended the separation of immigrant families by forecasting the collapse of the American family. See how they're putting this? Oh, these immigrants are going to come in and collapse the family. Well, damn, I'm an immigrant and I don't see any families that have collapsed. In fact, I've paid so much darn taxes in my early years. I think, I'm, I think, still think I'm a net positive, not think. I've been a huge net positive, both on taxes and otherwise. So folks, let's remember the reality, folks. Let's remember the reality. His rhetoric, intentional or not, place into textbook white nationalist claims about traditional family structures and the white race. You think any of these people really care about family separation? Carlson said of, of the liberals. If they did, they'd be worried about the collapse of the American family, which is measurable and real. You see what they're doing there? Look at Appalachia. No, none of them ever care about Appalachia. When you see crime on, t on TV, when you see drug abuse on TV, when you see all these things, it's either in the barrios or the ghettos. They rarely show it on Appalachia. Now, when they want to be sympathetic, when they want people to say, oh, it's an illness or whatever, then they'll show the drug problem in Appalachia. What do these guys have in common? The barrios, the ghettos, and, the, and, and, and Appalachia, the things they have in common is these are a suffered people who need assistance because of there, there are several reasons, but it, and it also shows that most of degradation is caused by social economic realities, right? But somehow they don't want it to look like social economic realities in the barrios and the ghettos, but in Appalachia, oh, it's nice, it's an illness, we need to go solve it. Appalachia, listen to me. My, I got listeners out there to listen to me. We are one family, brothers and sisters. We can't let them do this. We can't let Trump do this because Trump is going to use you to attack everybody else. But guess what? Trump, is, Trump is, has already screwed you. He promised you 
that he was going to have the healthcare system to take you out of your misery of the opioid addiction, he failed. He cut you. He promised you that when you saw your taxes, it was going to be better for you. He failed you. So come on, Appalachia, join the crowd, all right? Anyway, continuing. His rhetoric, intentional or not, plays into the... This is about Carlson. Uh, co uh, collapse of the American family. His rhetoric, intentional or not, plays into the textbooks while white nationalist claims about traditional family structures and the white race. You think any of these people really care about family separation, Carlson said, which is measurable and real. But they are not worried about that. In fact, they welcome the collapse because strong families are an impediment to their political power. And that's why they're always lecturing you about the patriarchy and the evil of the nuclear family. Folks, remember what projection is. Projection means what the things that you are saying, the things that you are saying is really what we are doing. Anytime somebody projects something on you, look back at them and remember to tell them projection. That's what you've been doing for the last 30 something years. That's what you've been doing for the last 30 something years. And then, of course, there is Laura Ingram. More kids are being separated from their parents and temporarily housed in what are essentially summer camps or as the San Diego Union Tribune described them today as basically looking like boarding schools, Ingram said Monday, the American people are footing a real bill for what is tantamount to slow rolling invasion of the United States. See what they're saying there? We're not protecting the people in Appalachia. We're not helping those people out. But those damn immigrants, those damn brown people down there at the border, we are sure helping them. And they're, that money is you paying that money and it's coming from you. It's a lie. It's a lie, but that's what they're telling you. It is clear that the president's posse was ready. His posse, Fox News and everybody else, that's his posse. Those are the people who support him. It's ready. Then he had all his, all his Facebook attaches and all these other guys that are doing these things for him to put out that message. He was a success. This little mishap that many of us are looking at as, oh, it's a mishap. No, it is organized chaos that works and that is working. It is clear. It is clear that the president's posse was ready. They completed the job to reinforce the base. Now the president plays nice. All is good. The mainstream media goes on the next distraction. Democrats forget to continue pointing out the evils. Status quo is maintained. Trump wins again. That is the cycle we must fight against. That is the cycle we must fight against. We must stop the insanity. You do things the same over and over again and expect a different result. Eso es insanidad. That's insanity. We got to be clear on what we want. We are going to go to the phones and let's go to 832. You are on the air. Talk to me. 832. You're on. Okay, let's try one more time. Yes, you're on. Hello. Hello. Is Bruce? Egberto. Hello. Yes, talk to me, yeah, Bruce. Yeah, this is Bruce. Well, so I need to talk a little bit about um, maybe it's collateral damage, but I worry sometimes when we make generalizations about groups of people. Sure. Certainly there are some people who are going to benefit from um, the separation of children from their families, yes, but sir. I don't think that psychologists are one of the groups. And for example, as you were talking yesterday about some people benefiting, the Texas uh, Psychological Association mm -hmm. was banding together. They um, drafted one of their directors, mm -hmm. and he went on the news, and he talked to the um, Texas governor, and the Texas Psychological Association came out very firmly as a group, making it clear that there could be long-term effects separating children from their families. Mm -hmm. And I think that, um, in general, the psychological group, which I'm very familiar with, is uh, very caring, and a group that, as a whole, is um, very much wanting families to stay together and to not have the things that were happening happen. Now, let me ask you a question. Did I somehow, I, and I don't know, I, I don't quite remember from the show yesterday, I think I mentioned some of the, uh, these issues of, about people benefiting from, uh, you know, separation of children. Did I somehow maybe... Uh, and I, a, I, think that, I, I think you, I think you let, um, linked many different professional groups in with that uh, people who are making money 
in perhaps uh, ways that are not in the best interest of the child. Well, if if I somehow lumped so, uh, psychological, gr- I mean, psychologists and psychiatrists and those those people in there, I, that would have been completely a misstatement. Because put it this way. If the if the kids are separated, they must have those psychologists and psychiatrists to talk to. So that right. is, you know, I, I have, yeah. you and know, that, go ahead. And the, the key is across the board here, we're stuck with, we certainly have parties to deal with, really only two. Mm-hmm. And then we have a bunch of individuals that stand and seem to be a part of the party. But sooner or later, we have a hope that... Um, that the party that will be able to help us move away from what we have now will gather together as a group of people who have their head on their shoulders and can choose someone who's a, a good, charismatic leader to bring us to a, a, a better position than uh, what we're guiding now. The, I... other, the other thing that is important um, in terms of news, Michael Rudden actually brought it out, and that is that um, there has been some movement uh, by uh, Mr. Trump to remove us from um, the Human Rights Council. And I think that that's a major thing that is uh, going to be a big problem for us if we continue to do that sort of thing. It's like almost like pulling out of the um, global warming uh, group. I think he's like uh, that we've already pulled out, right? Well, I, so, I, so I think the we news pulled out yesterday. I have, yeah, I have seen like from Bloomberg is that he's they're ready to pull out, but okay, I don't know that for a fact they have. Okay, well then you know uh, we probably looked at but the to, same news and probably people step aside from the Human Rights Council, it'd be just be terrible. No, you're you're abs- you're absolutely Great. right. Well, yeah. so let's. Uh, Let's let's keep keep working. We got to keep working this and looking at the individuals and weighing the individuals and making sure that we stop stop the people who are are slowing us down. But we we support the other people who could be helping us. Uh, Bruce, you're absolutely right about that, and that is you know that's why I always talk about. You know, uh, people have to know, however, what they're voting for, who they're voting for, because that example that I gave that occur in New Jersey. I mean. Uh, I, you know, I was just going through my feed today, and I think I picked it up at Talking Points Memo or one of these other um, uh, good, good, solid, progressive sites. And what I saw was, oh my God, could that really be true? And what's worse is after reading the article, it was, uh, it, it, it just proved some of the stuff that we've spoken about several times. In other words, imagine, imagine this, uh, all our listeners and Bruce, imagine this every year. Every budget period, the New Jersey Senate or the, the, the Democratic politicians in New Jersey would send Christie a bill uh, in order to help with the budget that included a 2% increase in taxes for the very wealthy in New Jersey. And tax would have covered 39,000 people. New Jersey have a few million people. Okay, 39 million people. Now, I mean 39,000 people. Now that there is a Democratic president, and the reason I'm repeating this is that there are many people who came on that, that hadn't been here before. Now that uh, Democrats are in complete and entire control of the, 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 the House, the Senate, and the, the governorship, he cannot get them to give him the bill that does it. But worse, they're talking to Christie as far as how to create a coalition to block this new Democratic governor from doing the job. Every single progressive and Democrat should be calling the state houses in New Jersey. I don't care where you're from, but especially if you're from New Jersey, you should be calling them. You should be calling them out as hypocrites. You should be on Facebook. You should be on Twitter calling out the president of the Senate in, uh, in, in New Jersey and make sure that they know that little secret is out. Because this is news. You know what's so funny? Bruce, what I tell you, one of the reasons that we all well, need... Well, you're definitely, you're, definitely, you're, you're definitely true that there's some crosstalk there. We knew that Governor Christie was perhaps not the ripest and, and juiciest apple when he allowed people who worked for him to block traffic. 
And then when he connected up with Mr. Trump, it was just, you know, people joining together that seemed to not be the best of uh, best of people for getting things done the way we want them, as opposed to try and, you know, move people and allow for collateral damage. And we just don't want that. It's not right. Absolutely not. But again, and one of the, you know, uh, we take, when I say weak, I talk about, I'm speaking about progressives who are always pointing out that the party, the establishment has a problem. Those of us that point that out time in and time out. They, uh, some, some call us that we are being divisive. Some tell us that we are doing it the wrong way. Some tell us all, all these other issues. How are we supposed to do it when we have what occurred in New Jersey? When we have what occurred even... Uh, let me remind people, uh, uh, Bruce, this is very important what I'm going to talk about. Let me, let me tell you the genesis of Trump. And I know a part of the genesis of Trump that made him viable. And I'm going to just go ahead and say Obamacare, right? And a lot of people will say, oh, well, it's a lot more than that. And you would be right. But let me remind you of something, okay? Back in 19, or rather, back in 2000, and uh, when was Obama in power? 2008, he got elected, 2009. Back in 2009, uh, or, but much earlier, President Obama said he supported Medi uh, Medicare for all, single payer. He supported that. Okay, fine. We understand that when he got into Congress, there would be some issues with just going all completely single payer right from the beginning. We understood that. I understood that. Uh, the, the people on the very progressive left, many of them, uh, were in Obama's skin because he wasn't going full-fledged single-payer health care. Okay, understood. But the bite was... We are going to get something called a public option. And, and I know some of you know that, but many don't understand this part. We're going to get something called a public option. A lot of people on the far left also didn't want that because they figured that could be done away with easily. And we continue with this uh, fee for service as well as insurance base, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So we had a, for, for, enough, for enough time, we had a, a, uh, a what is it called? Uh, a v not a veto proof, but we had a Senate that was filibuster proof. We had the entire Congress, the entire House, that we could get whatever policies we wanted done, done. We could have gotten what's called the public option into Obamacare, into the Affordable Care Act. Now, what would the public option had done in the Affordable Care Act? The public option would have forced all the insurance companies that are pilfering you now as they continue to indiscriminately raise prices, right? It would have forced those guys to a minimalist, minimalist uh, position. They couldn't go much further. And just like what occurred yesterday or the, this last week in New Jersey, where Democrats who claimed they were out there fixing things for the people to make sure the people's got better wages to make sure that people got better products, make sure that people got better uh, prices. They caved. They decided not even would we get a public option, not even a public option to increase competition from the plutocracy and you, we, the people. What did that do? That made Obamacare a whole lot more expensive than it should have been, and it gave the Republicans something to fight about. In other words, you know, on, before, before the Affordable Care Act, people can say all the bad things they want about it. But if it was implemented and implemented in such a manner that it made life better for most people and that it was uh, much cheaper, let's say on, in the order of a, just a little bit more than Canada, people would have been excited and there would be nothing Republicans could then say that would cause people to want to go back to where they were before. But as it turns out, something that's not very well implemented, something that allowed the plutocracy uh, to, to be the arbiter of prices again, that's exactly what we got. We got, we, we, we got enough destabilization that even though Trump didn't win, he could have won in the right places to take over the presidency. So if you want to know all the things that cause Trump to win, you can look and you can say, oh, it's racism. Those racist folks in Appalachia and certain parts of Pennsylvania and Michigan and all of that. That's partially true. But you know what? That is not nearly 
half the reason. That is not nearly seven, uh, 25% of the reason. Most of the reason is the incompetence of the Democratic Party. It is the incompetent. I mean, uh, let, let's give another example. And I, I, I'm sorry to be going on this, this uh, monologue here, but it's important for people to understand why we have to come out against the, uh, 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 we have to castigate the party, but at the, t at the same time, encourage progressives to go beyond the party to move forward. It is so very important to do so. And let me tell you how and what I mean. Uh, if, you, if, if you recall, uh, and I just lost my train of thought, but if you recall uh, how I got it back, if you recall, exactly what happened with Trump and Facebook and what people like to talk about the Russians having their bots do their things, right? Uh, these bots didn't just come automatically and they weren't uh, working autonomously, okay? Uh, the, 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 the Hillary campaign as well was offered the same kind of guidance directly from Facebook. She could have had a Facebook person in there teaching her how to do the penetration, the selectivity of people that you want to reach, the granularity of people you want to reach, etc. Her campaign said no. Likewise, Michael Moore and Bill Clinton himself said, hey, Michigan, Iowa, Pennsylvania East, p problem. We see some, I mean, the numbers are still looking positive in the aggregate, but in these areas we see problem, but we also have a degradation. Ah, my experts say, okay, the, the, those people that are the, the consultants say all is okay. Folks, let's remember this. Who the hell are these consultants? Have these consultants ever been in the barrios, the ghettos, or Appalachia? No. But you know what? Trump knew his. Trump had an application as well. He knew where things were. He, made, he did what Obama did with granularity, and he knew, his people knew, they, even though they thought, man, this would be cutting it close. If we win, it would be like a miracle. But if we are to win, these are the things we had to do. And they did it. Right? And I don't care if you want to call Russia. You can call Russia all that kind of a stuff. It's, you know, you can say that. But the reality is if Democrats had done their job, there would be no, there, even, with, even with a flawed candidate like Hillary Clinton, there would not have been a loss. And what's sad is that there's much that we did in 2016 that we're doing in 2018. And there's an article that I read, I think it's one I read yesterday or the day before, partially quoted yesterday or the day before, that another author said the same thing. He said, it is starting to feel like 2016. It is starting to feel like 2016. I want you guys to watch TV, all the news channel. There's a whole lot going on in, in, in Congress right now, and nobody's talking about it, right? This new bill that is cutting like hell the social safety net. Have you heard about the social safety net being cut on the news, or are you just hearing about um, the immigrant families, etc.? And what do you think happens then? That, you know, wait, you, you, they're taking all these things away from folk. They're not covering it. And then people sit back and they say, when did all of this happen? How and who is to be blamed? And you know what? You know who's very good at pointing blame to who's not to be blamed? The right wing. They are so good at it. So it's starting to feel a hell of a lot like 2016. Bruce, you have something to add before I go to the page and see what people are talking about. Uh, so the big question is, is when can we try again to have our own party? Let me tell you when we try again, okay? We try again right now. There's, there think, these things are not mutually exclusive, right? What I'm yeah, saying, I totally agree. Yeah, they're not mutually exclusive. The time is now. What we do is this. I am a, I've worked within the Democratic Party, absolutely so. But I work also with any independent uh, thing forming to challenge what we have as an establishment and it is imperative that that is done, and it's imperative that everybody do that. And the reason why is you don't, you know, people sit, a lot of people like to sit back and wait till things are right, or things are all organized, or things are in just the right state. We have to learn to operate in a state of flux because the world operates in a state of flux. In other words, uh, things don't have to be perfectly right. Uh, with the Democratic Party for you to uh, make sure that Democrats get elected in 2018. Things don't have to be perfectly right with establishing a new organization or party because you're affiliated with another. You don't. We are working not for parties. We're working for the American people. We're working for us all. And once we start thinking like that, 
If somebody has, like I tell people all the time, I have a friend here in Kingwood that says, why the hell are you working with the Democratic Party? They are no good X, Y. I'm like, what else must I do? I am going to work with whatever it is at that point in time to make life better for everybody else. Uh, Bruce, let me go to the, uh, uh, let me go to the, to our, come on now. Let's get. Yeah, thank you very much for taking my call. Absolutely, so and thank you for the, for the information, and thank you for making sure I corrected uh, the er- the error of my ways, my brother. Well, we just want we just have to examine every person and and look at their validity and try and and work out the best team to move forward and get where we need to go. You're absolutely right, sir. Thank you for calling in, my brother. Yes, sir. Okay, now, folks, uh, let's see. Let's, let's go to the boards. All right, we go. Uh, let's see. Stephen Jones, hi from London. Hey, I, think I, I think I gave you a call out already. We have Mike Cisek, my resident, res, my resident conservative. Terry Laurie Locker says, I don't think it's beyond Trump to have strategized this whole mess and paint himself as the problem-solving hero. Terry Laurie Locker, you get it. You get it, my friend. You get it. Michael Rudnan, U.S. pulls out of the U.N. human. Yes, I, that's what we spoke about earlier. Uh, Myra Noel, uh, hello from Illinois. Welcome aboard. My, uh, now, uh, Myra, I don't know if I saw you here before, but welcome aboard. I'm really liking you, Egberto Willis. Thank you for speaking out on so many people's behalf. We have to do it, and we have to do it together. Again, Terry Lauren uh, Locker, I'm glad the policy is ending, but what happens to those who have already been separated from Family United? Forgotten? Some will be forgotten. Some of them, they don't know who the parents are. This is sad. And what it means is that they are going to sell those kids to somebody here in the United States to raise going forward. They have broken up a family. These, these evangelical loving folk, these people that claim to be then the words of the Lord. That is what they've done. They destroy They've destroyed families. They've destroyed families. Donna Lawson, important to stay on this jackass without letting up. Make him cave and cave again. I love the way you said that. Michael Redden, I'll take, uh, take good news where I can. Are you right, my brother? Stephen, actually, I'm an Aussie living in London. Oh, so I got a twofer. I got an Australian calling in from London. And we have Ben Ferloni. Trump made his enemies angrier and more resolute in getting rid of him his way by any means necessary. Yeah, but he also emboldened those right-wingers, and they have guns. Jeffrey Lemkin, bottom line, Trump is backing down in one way, but digging in another. He's saying he'll keep families together, but he wants to do that by being granted the legal right to detain children with no time limits. There you go. That's it. Uh, Stephen, let's see. Stephen uh, Jones, I don't like Trump planned to K, but he knows how to play ignorant people. Yes, he does. Very well. Mike Cisak, don't come here for the truth and facts. They aren't any given. I know you would say that, my brother, but you know what? I still love you. But what I speak here are facts, and I always tell my audience, check it out. Not only that, the things that I write, I give you links. Check it out. Refute what I say with evidence. I will put it against anyone. Anything that I say is backed up. I want, you to tell, I want to tell you something. If you doubt it, look it up. And if you find I, I had an error in my ways, as, as Bruce did today, Bruce said, Egberto, you kind of used the blanket yesterday when you spoke about those who profited from this. And it was a, it was a sort of a word, a, a, slip of the, a slip of the tongue, and I corrected it. So that's what it's all about. Failed Democrats started, start by looking at the votes for banking deregulation. You're absolutely right. Uh, absolutely right. And I think the guy from, uh, where is he from? That got in trouble. I, I can't remember him. Okay. Michael D. Newton. Bullocks Mike Cisek. You. <laughs> okay, Michael. Rennie, I have Mike Cisek blocked. Don't block. Look, brothers and sisters, let's not block our fellow brothers and sisters because it's through communication that we change minds. All right? It's really through communication that we change minds. So you don't have to block folks. You know, you may want to tune them out every so often, but don't block them. I am a Democrat, but I believe we need a third party. Donna Lawson, from your words to my heart, my brain, everywhere else. Debbie Weiser Williams, I my bet you're wise. He temporarily caved his political extortion at the expense of the well-being of babies and children was backfiring on him. This move today was to control the media. Oh, you get it. Uh, Debbie Weiser Williams, your middle, uh, your middle name was absolutely right. 
If anyone believes this nightmare is over, they're not paying attention. Thank you, Miss Weiser Williams. All right, Mike Cisek. Immigration lawyers recounts a conversation in 2015 with Obama about the border crisis. I saw that. What does it mean? Come on now. Grow up. R Rhonda Sig, 919 says, pay attention to army bases because that is the new tent cities. You got that right. Donna Lawson, paying attention and seeing him and those standing behind him. Michael Rudnan, fiscal conservatives, LOL. I know it's an oxymoron, right? Uh, Mike Cisak, Democrats refuse to fix the immigration problem they cause. Wrong, wrong, wrong. The immigration problem would be fixed if, the, if, if Republicans didn't walk away from a deal they all supported. They supported it, and their right wing, their right flank went ahead and screwed them over. Don't forget that we had a bill, brothers and sisters. We had a bill before Obama. Okay, those tent cities had room for 4,000 children. Wow. So we want to encamp 4,000 kids. That's a shame. This is the United States of America. Do you remember that? Michael Rudnan, conservatives rarely pay the price, and they don't pay the price because of us. Politics done right is one and only one program that calls them out. We know the mainstream media rarely does it. In fact, if you go and watch all the Sunday political shows, all the Sunday political shows, the main stars are usually Republicans. So they have stay in power. Somehow they have stature. Somehow they give them more serious airtime than they do progressives. But we don't have to go there. We can come here. That's why I ask you guys, make sure and support Politics Done Right and other programs like this because if we are to educate, if we are to inform a whole lot of folks, <clears throat> we have to be there. So don't forget, go to patreon.com slash politics done right. Patreon.com slash politics done right. Patreon, P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com slash politics done right. Donna Lawson, this all is all about his bottom line and those of his buddies. Lots of people are making big dinero, big dollars. Uh, I think uh, on this issue, follow the money. Exactly right, Donna. Sue Walker, I hope this November people remember this. You know how they're going to remember it? If politics done right and when we go to Netroots Nation, we get a few people to come out and put it there and put a whole lot of videos out there and keep people aware of it. Because if you're expecting the Democrat es Democratic establishment to come out with the right kind of marketing to show, promote this and show how evil this was and how it represents the base of the Republican Party, why it is that the Republican Party should not have people in Congress or people ruling, you can forget it because they're not going to do it. As you can see, they work together. Do you think the mainstream media is going to do it? Absolutely not because they are owed and paid for by the plutocracy. It is going to be independent programs like Politics Done Right, like, uh, like uh, TYT, like, uh, like, like uh, uh, Majority Report, all these other organizations, uh, DailyCoast.com, OpEdNews.com. These are the people that are going to be doing it. We have to stay alive if we are going to get people to start voting right because they're not going to hear it neither from either of their parties or these guys because these two parties work in a very small line. The two rails, the left rail and the right rail. rail. The left rail and the right rail. But guess what? These two rails are going in the same direction. What does that tell you? It tells you a lot. Anyhow, uh, Sue Walker, uh, don't wait for November. The Democratic primaries are ongoing. Sue, magical. Listen to what Sue has to say. The primaries are now. We have to elect the right progressives in all these primaries. We, we were partially successful in Texas, mostly in the races where Republicans uh, have a better chance. Now, in the races that Democrats thought they should hold, <laughs> you know what happened. The DCCC came in and tried to corrupt the election. But folks, that's okay. We're going to work hard. So, uh, Sue Walker, you are so smart. Vote blue 2018. Michael Redden and Sue Walker, don't wait for November. Democratic primaries are on. Okay, let's see. Uh, Sue Walker again. Yeah, I voted in California a couple weeks ago. And California turned out all right. I wish that we had a better, better than the 30% or so that voted. I wish we had more than that, but it's okay. All right. The desperation that comes with poverty is the top cause of crime. Absolutely so. Mike Sisak, Egberto, why then aren't these immigrants stopping in Mexico? It's much closer. They're not stopping in Mexico because America presents a better option. I got somebody on the phone. Let's go ahead and get that person in before we're over. Come on in. Uh, 301, you're hot. Yes, hi. Uh, this is Henry. I, I'm, I'm just calling to give my reaction to this madness that's going on. Go ahead, sir. Um, 
I, yes, I, I think we missed the, the point, right? Um, we missed the point when we focused on Trump mm-hmm. entirely, and we don't realize that there are a lot of uh, elements around him that if we were to part, you know, sh- show light on them, we might actually get to a more productive um, sort of, you know. Let me ask you a foolish question, my dear case, friend. Keep me Let me ask you a foolish question. Have you, yes, have you listened me. to our show before? Yes. Because if you notice, there, there are items that we cover that the mainstream that's going to cover where it covers the, the, what they're doing to the environment, what they're doing to these other areas that actually materially affect people. We're, and in fact, there are some blogs that we have out there on Daily Coast and on EgbertoWillis.com where we tell you ex- pretty much what you're saying, which is very correct and very important. And that is smoke and mirrors and let's concentrate on not the distractions, but what's actually happening. Tell me if that's what you're telling me that we must focus more on. Right. Yeah. So that's part of it. Right. So mm-hmm. the I think if we were to focus on the people mm-hmm. and not just the head, mm-hmm. Trump, we need to find those that are the culprits. Right. In, right. in this case of the immigration issue, we know that Steve Miller is essentially the one that's behind us. Mm-hmm. And Trump by himself doesn't get as much um, leverage if we if he doesn't have those people around him. And right. I think we should be focusing on the people that kind of get them to this point in the first place. That way we can isolate them. You know what I mean? Yes. Let me, let me tell you something else. Um, what is your name, sir? Henry. Henry. I forgot. To, okay. Any, let me tell you something, Henry. I love what you have to say. And what I'd like to tell you is uh, now we have that on air, what you have to say. So, folks, listen to Henry. What Henry is saying is absolutely correct. I'd like you to do a favor, though. Go ahead and, and write some of that under, you know, in, in little bullet points or as well in our, uh, in, under the video for this, the, the, the live stream for this, because it's important. What you're saying is very important, and that is how we get things done. You understand that that is how it needs to be done. So we need to crowdsource how we handle, crowdsource how we're going to move forward. Those are very good points. Anything else you want to add, my friend? Well, again, you know, it's follow the money, follow the people that are behind this mess, and we can find a way to stranglehold them and make sure that they don't get as much substance as, as they have and, in a way, you know, give us a chance to win. Because so far, I think the Republican Party, they've been making quite a few progress with their base. Right. And I, don't, I can't say the same thing for the Democrats. You're absolutely... The base, the Democratic base, it's, it's almost, you know... Yes, the anger, the, the angry with what's going on, but I don't think there's any direction to where to go. The progressive, we kind of in the limbo. We don't know what to do. There's no. You're, there's I no agree with there. you. Um, I, I got to go, Henry, but I 100% am with you. And folks are going to hear what you just had to say as well. That is very important. And, and, and what you're, you, you've actually given some marching orders as well. Maybe we need to add a little segment to this show that says, and what is our marching orders for the day or marching orders for the week or going forward, etc. So thank you so kindly for bringing that to the fold, my friend. Sure, thank you. Have a nice day. You too. All right, folks, we're coming to the end of the show, but I want to just get to a couple of people. Ray Holder, my cousin, notice he, de Panama, notice he's lied when he said this has been going on for 60 years. He's a full of vanity. You're absolutely f- correct. Tom Bell, Trump's EO, always for the indefinite. Uh, let's see who I haven't gotten to. I want to just get somebody in that I haven't gotten to. Uh, Michael Tiemann, the rails are going into the ditch. Absolutely. So, folks, we are at the end of the program. Thank you so kindly for those who've called in. Thank you so kindly for those who have left messages. This is your show, as you know. Uh, we love to have your point of view. Uh, you've, you add with your point of view. You make the show better with your point of view. You know why? Because it is crowdsourcing, understanding where all of us need to be. No one man, no one woman, no one person has all the answers. It is how we fuse them together that makes a difference. Now, my last call, please go to patreon.com, P-A-T-R-E-O-N.com slash politics done right and support the progressive word support progressive media we are the ones who are going to help make this change because again the powers that be have no interest in doing so the powers that be have no interest in doing so you know folks my name is 
Egberto Willis. This is Politics Done Right, and you know where we're going from here, or you know what I'm going to say. I am out! Welcome to Politics Done Right. I am your host, Egberto Willis. This is the progressive program that will take the mystery out of politics. This is the program that will encourage you to make sure government becomes we the people. Whether you are liberal, conservative, or otherwise, you get to air your point of view. Remember, you can also send me a tweet to E-G-B-E-R-T-O-W-I-L-L-I-E-S, that is, at Egberto Willie. Let us engage. It is politics done right. One, two, three, four.